the leader of the company, having a clear vision, a clear understanding of what they're in business for, and not just to make money. You know, of course, it's a given. The business is in the business to make a profit. But what else are they in the business for? And can, can they clearly articulate that to their employees? Can they clearly articulate that to their, to their customers? Is everybody on board and really energized about higher purpose, okay? So this, there was five questions that they asked to really get at is that higher purpose. Um, world part of the company, um, that, was, that was one of the, the things that these companies scored high on, these companies that I mentioned. Under stakeholder integration, this is talking about treating your employees, your customers, your vendors, the community, as well as shareholders, all um, a win-win situation for all, not just focused on the shareholders and treating the employees as a means to an end. Culture, probably not, because most businesses don't. That's why out of all of the companies, they went through several hundred companies to come up with a list that scored high. I mean, there's just a short list that actually even ranked on these items. Nobody was perfect. The idea is, is it's a journey to, to, you know, just like nobody's fully enlightened, right? It's a journey to become a more conscious company. Um, but in terms of culture, let me, let me talk to you about a little bit of uh, what they looked at for that. Does the company have a high degree of trust? amongst the employees, the leadership and the, and the employees. Is there a high degree of transparency, both internally and externally? Um, do we, so think of Enron, right? Mm -hmm. Now think of the opposite of Enron. So do we do what we say and, and mean what, do we mean what we say and say what we mean, okay? Um, that the, the people that work for you are the lifeblood of the company, and, and some of the exemplars that were, were interviewed actually went out of their way to extraordinary lengths to keep people during tough times, you know, working through furloughs and different creative solutions, but the amount of loyalty that the people returned was off the charts, right? Um, and that... Uh, and, and also, it's, it's, it's the opposite of command and control. So these, these companies are companies that in, found the right people, trusted them, had a culture of trust and caring compassion, and empowered them. It wasn't Timberland, Toyota, Trader Joe's, um, BMW, Caterpillar, Container Store, Costco. What do each of these companies have? Um, how can we codify this? And they codified it in these four pillars, these four tenets. Now, I don't want to go on too long here, but this was a book that came out in 2003. It also became a movement. So CEOs like the CEO of Costco, the CEO of, CEO of um, Southwest Airlines, and some of the other companies I mentioned, they meet um, as part of a national organization, national conscious capitalism organization, once a year at, as a CEO summit. So what it's all about is this is a journey. Nobody's doing this perfectly, right? To try to change an organization or even improve on these practices is, is a huge thing, right? And one company might do one of these quadrants better than another. So what these CEOs do is they get together and they talk about implementation. They talk about best practices. W what is it like for you trying to deal with some issues around, around these uh, particular topics? Endearment companies. Here's the good degree companies, and here's the S and P 500. So over a 15 years, this is 15 years, 10 years, five years, three years. Over a 15 year period, the companies that were the firms of endearment companies that scored high on those four quadrants, they outperformed the S and P companies over that 15 year period, 14 to one. And they outperformed the good to great companies over that 15 year period, six to one. So it does, what, what they uh, ended up showing is it does make a difference. And I tell you, there's in, in, uh, 
So I wanted to give you, does anybody recognize who this is? We love them. Who is <laughs> That's Joe Fougere. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to give you some local examples of companies that are doing it right. Who is it? This is uh, Tutabella. Tutabella. And the, the, the owner's name is? Joe Fougere. Joe Fougere, right. So here's an example of someone who's doing it right. He has a very, do you want me to read you what his purpose for this business is? It's to nourish lives by sharing traditions, authentic food, and love. And he says here, See, seeing my employees live this mission motivates me on a daily basis. Now, what kind of environment is that going to be that they all buy into his mission, they all believe in it, and they come to work and they're excited about it, it motivates him. And guess what? He has very low employee turnover, very low employee turnover. Okay, and uh, oh, <laughs>